morning and praise the Lord. I welcome all of us who are gathered here and those who are following us online. Psalm chapter 100 says, Shout to the Lord, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that God is, the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. It is my belief that that is what you have come here, to lift the name of Jesus, to praise him, to testify of his goodness. We are a sheep of his pasture and he's a wonderful shepherd. If that's the cry of your heart, would you stand up as we begin? Let's pray. Our loving Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for yet another opportunity you have given us to gather here. Father, as your people raise their voices to worship you, we pray that, Lord, may it be pleasing before you. May it be a sweet-smelling incense in your presence. And may you minister to our hearts. Take the preeminence in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, good morning. We want to welcome you to ICF. Thank you, Pauline, your team, for leading us this morning in worship. We want to welcome you to our church. Uh, we're a church of many places um, and many people, but we love Jesus, and we want him to shine both in our own lives and the lives of those around us. Uh, at this time, uh, children ages 2 to 5th grade, 2 to 5th grade can go out and have a good time in your Sunday school class, and so hope you guys do well. As they're leaving, if you are a first-time guest, we want to say welcome to ICF. Uh, there's a form, as you see on the screen. Uh, it's at the information booth. It helps us get to know you a little bit better. Uh, there's a way you can sign up for our weekly email. Let's you know what's going on in the life of our church. We have some exciting events coming up in the life of our church. This Saturday uh, is the CASCON conference, um, and so we're excited to host that along with some other educational institutions for Kenyan Sunday school teachers. You're welcome to come. Quite a few people have signed up. If you've signed up, you should get an email from me tonight uh, about signing up for the sessions you want to attend. There's three times where you can go to different sessions, and so you'll see that in your email. If you're volunteering for a room host, thank you for doing that. We have enough to fill all 16 spaces. Um, we're going to meet in my room 211, about five to six minutes after the service, just to give you a little bit of instruction. So if that's you, uh, please be there. Um, as you saw, maybe when you came in, there's a table in the back. Uh, Pastor Peter mentioned that this week we're doing uh, Joseph's Storehouse for the next month. We're collecting all kinds of items. You can see them on the screen, uh, and they're going to serve undernourished, underprivileged places uh, around. We're going to be partnering with some churches to distribute that. So if you have things uh, in your home or you want to buy some food supplies, or school supplies, we ask that you do that and bring that over the next four weeks. Note they should be in good condition. Make sure they're clean when you bring them, but we're excited about that opportunity. And soon you'll hear about an opportunity perhaps to take those to those churches who will distribute them. We do have a baptism coming up in just a few weeks, so we're really excited about that. Um, if you're interested, you can sign up at the information table, or you can talk to a pastor piece, myself or someone else, uh, but we're really excited for that. There'll be a class on the 26th, and in Palm Sunday we'll have that there. Um, this week, the women's study is going to be a meeting um, on campus here at Roslyn um, because uh, the people who usually host that are away. So just a reminder, you'll meet here same time, 1030 to 12, I think, um, but you'll meet uh, at campus and be directed when you get here. So come if you can. The men's prayer breakfast is in a couple of weeks. We're excited about that. We've had that once a month. And so if you want to be a part of that group, you see a place there that you can do that. And finally, in the back, there is a place to give. Uh, also on Buy and Pesa, I just encourage you to continue to give as God's given uh, to us so that we can serve God as a church community. So we're going to continue to worship, so I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up. And let's stand and worship the Lord together.
You may be seated. Good morning, church. I would like to read Psalm 8 and then join us in prayer. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Will you join me in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We exalt you this morning. There is no God like you. Everywhere we look around us, even the people beside us, we recognize and see your power in your creation. And we give you thanks and praise, Father. Father God, I thank you and praise you that you crown us with love and compassion. You do not treat us as our sins deserve. So we confess our sins to you, Lord, this morning. And we do ask that you would cleanse our hearts and remove anything that would hinder our worship and hinder our time with you, hinder our ability to approach you. God, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all our sin. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege of coming before you, our holy God. Father God, we ask that your kingdom would reign in our hearts, that we would exalt you as ruler of our lives from day to day. Lord, as a church for ICF, we pray. We thank you, God, for the Cascon conference that is coming up next Saturday. We thank you for the preparation that's gone into that. And we ask, Father, that you would use that to raise up uh, godly teachers of your word throughout Kenya. Lord, we thank you for the Joseph Storehouse Drive. Give us generous hearts, Lord. You have blessed us with abundance. And there are many here in Kenya who struggle for day-to-day -day things. God, let us show your love. Let us be your hands and feet uh, as we share what we have with those who don't have. God, we give you thanks for the rain that we've seen. We ask that you'd continue to send your rain and flood the earth. Lord, we've got, we've got lots of places here in Kenya where people are struggling uh, because of the drought in Marsabet, Turkana areas, Lord. God, I pray that you, would be, uh, that you would be gracious to us and provide more rain. We give you thanks, Lord. Father, we ask for the government of Kenya that you would be with those who are in leadership, we ask, Father God, that you would um, help them to seek your face. Would you shine your truth into um, each part of the government and each part of the country, and that uh, those in leadership would act in wisdom and that you would reign, Lord. Father God, we ask especially for those... Uh, Christians throughout the world who are suffering because of their faith. Give them courage, Lord. Bring to mind your word. Comfort them, Lord. Give them peace. For those, God, who are, have been affected by natural disasters, for the cyclones hitting southern Africa, Lord, for, for the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, God, we pray for um, Christians around the world to reach out uh, to those in need. We pray also for the um, for Ukraine, that you would bring your strength and your peace in that part of the country. Lord God, there's many parts of the country here around us as well, with Ethiopia and Somalia, Sudan. Father, in each of these places, you have your people. 
I pray that they would feel your presence and that they would seek your face and that you would make yourself known to them even in the times of tribulation. Now, Lord, as we come to you uh, for the service, I ask that you would open our hearts to your word, be with Pastor Peter as he preaches, help it to, uh, your spirit to speak through him and to prompt our hearts, Lord. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. When Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from these heaps of rubble, burned as they are? Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, What they are building, if even a fox climbed up on it, he would break down their wall of stones. Hear us, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. Good morning. It is great to be here in the presence of God, and I would like to welcome all of you as we worship the Lord. The God is here, and he will hear the cry of our heart and coming to the Lord. A long time ago when I was pastoring in the church, um, I um, decided to encourage our children's ministry. So on Sunday, I arranged other speaker. And then as a senior pastor, I went down to visit all the departments in children's ministry in our church. There are the many departments and many services. So I was going to just visit them just a few minutes and then just pray for them, encourage them, and move to another grade and go on. So I was planning to do that. It was exciting to uh, encourage them and bless them, and, uh, which is hard to do uh, when you preach every Sunday for the church. And then the education department, um, the pastor asked, you know, Pastor Shane, if you're coming to our departments, wouldn't that be great if you can bring some small gift for children? So they said, how about we prepare a little snack for them and you can give it to them? So I thought that was a great idea. So let's do that. What should I give? And then they come up with the idea that uh, from first grade to sixth grade, we'll give them a chocolate cookie. But for the uh, younger and up to kindergarten, they decide to give an orange because some mothers don't like uh, too much sugar on the young kids. So I said, that sounds great. Let's do that. So they prepared the snack as if that was a gift from me. And then I'll go in every department in each grade in their worship service and pray for them and encourage them and so on and so forth. So the, that day came, and I did that, and everything went so well and well-received and great. So what I did was um, I was going through all the grades, so I put the one orange on my left pocket and the chocolate cookie on the right pocket. So after I encouraged them and prayed for them, I said, you know, Pastor brought a something small gift for you. So for the kindergarten and younger, I brought orange and then they shared orange with them. And then for the upper grade, I brought chocolate cookie. So they shared chocolate cookie all together. And um, I was speaking and, and doing that all fine. And then one department, the kindergarten, uh, I um, did the same thing, pray for them and encourage them. And then 
I said, uh, here I brought a small gift for you, and I took a, a chocolate cookie. It's supposed to be orange. As soon as I put the chocolate cookie out, I saw the all orange was plated and set it up for them. But then what can you do? It's too late. So I thought it was no big deal about that. So I said, I brought some more gift for you. You can have that. And then I just prayed for them and then finished. One thing happened following Sunday. I got a note from a mother who has a kid in that kindergarten service. And she said, the kid came home on that day, and she mother asked, so what happened today? And, he, and she said, oh, the Pastor Chin came to our service. And that was great. And then she said, you know, Pastor Chin gave us orange, but he took chocolate cookie. <laughs> I was so, uh, I didn't know how to respond to that. And she was thinking that, you know, you gave us an uh, orange and chocolate cookie, you took it. And, um, you know, criticism is there everywhere. I think when all leaders has to have to face criticism. I say there's no leader who does not have a criticism in their own lives. And that is always tough. Some criticism is very productive. It's a loving, but many and much of the criticism is destructive and negative and always uh, bring us down. We see here how to handle the criticism. In Nehemiah chapter 4, that we see Nehemiah facing their own, his own criticism. I mean, just keep that in mind how God has given him the vision and building the future, rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem, and the people were responding, let us build together. They were excited, they're working together, and they're building the walls again. And then there is criticism came, and that's where the chapter 4 has. How do we handle criticism? And that's the how we can see from the chapter 4 how Nehemiah handles criticism. Three things that I can say from this passage, the how to handle the criticism in our own lives. First, we have to discern the criticism. Look at verse 1 and their criticism. When when Sandabal, Sambalat, and heard that we are rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring stones back to life from those heaps of rubbles, burnt as they are? Tobiah the Ammonites, who was at his side, said, What they are building, even a fox climb up on, it would break down their wall of stones. Sambalat and Tobiah, they were angry, and they were furious, and they started ridiculing the Jewish people and Nehemiah. And this is what happens in talking about all that complaints and all that criticism coming out from there. Now, when we have criticism, how do we respond? Our feeling is that we feel hurt. We are moved by that criticism, and that bothers us a great deal, and we are so much moved in a way that we are discouraged and even angry. And keep that in mind that we're doing the God's work and everybody's doing so well, yet the criticism comes and brings them down as if they are just throwing the cold water on them. You know, the criticism comes not always in the best time. In fact, it comes in a very best time as well. God's hands was with them, and they were still rebuilding with excitement and all together, and then criticism comes in such a way that will bring them down. When we have a pure motive and serving, and yet the criticism comes, 
When we're working so hard and things going well and it's great and yet the criticism comes. When at least expected, when things are going well, when you feel that you sacrifice yourself and working hard and doing this and the criticism comes and shaking us down and bring us down. And that's what's happening in this picture. The criticism comes and especially that comes from unqualified people, and that makes us mad and angry and going through that process. What do you do in that? See how the Nehemiah did in chapter 4, verse 6. It says, So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their they did not mad. They were not trying to revenge. They were not go there and trying to explain. They were continue and building. And the people of God worked all with all their hearts. They were discerning the criticism. Where does it come from? And what is that about? The source of criticism, the content of criticism, they were evaluating, they were discerning to see that, and that's what's taking place. And we know that this came from Sambalad and Tobiah. In chapter 2, verse 10, we even hear them coming out earlier and saying that when Sambalad and Hanarite and Tobiah, the Ammonites, the official heard about this. They were very much disturbed that someone had to come to promote the welfare of Israelites. They were not happy. They did not like Israelites. It was not the right criticism. It was the destructive criticism that was trying to bring them down. And that's what we see it taking place. So discern the criticism, the content of criticism, the source of criticism, to see the intention and the reality of the criticism in that. It came from, from Sambalat and Tobiah, who are already do not like Israelites and trying to bring them down and disturb them. And that's what's going to happen. We see that happen with the Pharisees, with Jesus. They were trying to bring Jesus down and with all kinds of criticism because they're afraid they will lose their power when Jesus became as a savior of them. And that's what's taking place here, the criticism coming. When we have a criticism, we are very much moved by the criticism and that bothers us a great deal. Even though there are so many good things going on, and just some criticism can really uh, make us suffer in that. We dwell on that thoughts, and what we hear just continually remain in our mind and just uh, uh, bothers us and brings us down. We memorize those things, we meditate those things, and that brings out and losing our desire to do. There's two ways people usually respond in criticism. One day got really mad and angry, want to face to face and confront that and explain and defend and make sure that's not the case at all and, and you can do all that correction. Or people just give up. Why would I do all this, going through all that criticism, no need, no bothering, and I just don't want to go through all that and just give in and give up the whole thing and move away from that. You see, the criticism is not thinking about that person, but rather criticism is coming from your own end, that you want something from that by doing it. And that is a negative criticism and destructive the criticism that can pull us down and kill our hearts. The one person came to pastor and said, Pastor, give me some wisdom. I have gift of criticism. What should I do? And the pastor wisely said to him, well, that's great. Then please use your gift to yourself. You see, the criticism is not for the person, but rather for yourself and try to get something out of that and, and through that. 
And because of that negative and destructive conceptism, that we are going down and difficult times on that. And how do you see that? And even though Sambalad and Tobiah are calling Jews a feeble Jews, the word here feeble is very dried up and insignificant. Some other translation says pathetic Jews, miserable Jews. They are weak people. You see, they bring them down, and that all negative, destructive criticism is there. And Nehemiah and the people of Israel, they discern the criticism, where it came from, what is it about, and then they respond in verse 14. It says, don't be afraid of them. And just ignore them and don't be afraid of them. Move on with that. Disregard that. And just do not be shaken by that. Because it's destructive and negative ones. And they know where it came from. They know what it is about. And they discern the criticism and do not let it bother them. And that's the first thing that we see Nehemiah is doing. Discern criticism, the source of it and the content of it, and see how you respond to that. If there's something is good that we can learn and grow from that, we're willing to listen and respond to it. But if it's not the case, through our discerning spirit, then disregard them and do not be shaken by that and don't be afraid of them. How can we do that? Because the secondly, we have to look to God next. Verse 4, right after all this, here we see the Nehemiah praying to God. Verse 4, hear us, our God, for we are despised. Turn their insult back on their own heads. Give them over as a plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insult in the face of the builders. We see Nehemiah right after that criticism, and don't be afraid of that, disregard that, and then moving into prayer. Verse 9, we see the same thing. It says, but we pray to our God. And look to God. And when you look to God in all our situation, and people are coming in the right perspective. And verse 14 says that don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. The Bible tells us that don't be afraid of those criticism. Because you know where it's coming from, you know what is it about, and as you discern the criticism, then now it's time to turn to God and remember the Lord who is great and awesome. The Hebrew word remember here is not just the thinking about at once. I forgot about it, and I just came up to my mind. That's not the, what it means. In fact, the remember in, in Hebrew word here is actually your intellectual and intent, intended desire to thinking through and thrive into remember. It's a call to mind. It's a recalling. It's thinking of him who is great and awesome God. The Bible tells us as we discern the criticism, then we're moving on to prayer and thinking about the great and awesome God. Are we going to please men or are we going to please God? And we're looking at that and look to God for his power and his grace. For he is great and awesome God. When your eyes are being bothered, when your ears are there to really bring us down, then we look to God and we hear, we pray to God to hear our prayers. Looking to God and leading us in the third way to handle our criticism. Keep moving forward. As we discern the criticism, we look to God for his guidance 
and we keep moving forward. Verse 6, so we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height. For the people worked with all their hearts. We see the people are working hard, and they're working together, and yet they did not stop. If those criticism brought them down and they dropped that, then the wall of Jerusalem would not be rebuilt. But they kept on. And forget about those negative criticism, looking to God and keep moving forward and building it. Look at verse 12. It says, At that time the Jews who lived near them came from all direction and said to us ten times, you must return to us. It was criticism. It was threat. And they say, you know, don't stay there. Give up. Forget it. And just come out. Ten times they were telling them to do. But they did not do that. They did not give up. They did not give in. And they kept on moving forward to the point where verse 9 we see that not only they prayed, but they put the guard and day and night to meet this threat. In fact, verse 17 tells us they took a one hand and the weapon and then the other hand they were continually work with rebuilding the wall. They were carrying the weapons while they are working one hand. And that's what's happening here, did not stop, but continued and kept moving forward and building to do that. My brothers and sisters, we see in our own lives and can be totally free from criticism in any kind in many ways. But here, and when we face the criticism, and maybe it's inevitable that we are going through criticism at some point and some time. And then some people are saying, you know, if you don't want a criticism, then do nothing. Then you will not have any criticism. But it was my experience, when you do nothing, you still have criticism while you're doing nothing. So here, as we're moving on as God's people, as the leaders who make differences and influences will face criticism. It's inevitable. Anybody who has influence will face criticism. Discern the criticism. Where are you coming from? And what is it? We need to have a humility to hear the criticism, but if that discerning of spirit tells us that criticism is destructive, and then don't let it bother you. And we're moving on and disregard and don't let it shake you. And moving on and look to God. For God is great and awesome God. And you remember, you call to mind who God is in what we are doing. And that keeps us moving forward, not giving in. Winston Churchill, and later on, in his, back to his own school, he has those famous speech. He came out and said, never give in. Never, never, never give in. Moving on, what God has given us, even when there is criticism, that we're moving on and keep moving forward to rebuild to restore, to revive. Even in our own lives, handling criticism is vital as a leaders. The ones who make differences, the ones who make influences. As we're moving together, the great and awesome God will help us in the way that we keep moving forward to see what God is doing in our midst. Let's pray. Maybe some of us are going through a difficult time. Maybe those criticisms bring us down. It's outrageous. 
It just does not make sense. And sometimes those criticisms not even have a source to hear from. We feel mad and hurt and discouraged and furious at times. And we feel helpless and we feel lowering down and losing our hearts as those criticisms bring us down. Nehemiah took that time and with such criticism, he discerned the criticism. And knowing that this is not to bring us, not to build us up, but bring us down. And don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. Thinking and calling mind to, to look up God for his great and awesome God so that we can keep moving forward to rebuild, to restore, to revive. Dear Lord, we come before you. In our own lives, O oh Lord, just like a Nehemiah, when we are about to do something great, when things are going well, when we are working so hard, when we are purely willing to do and, and, and serve, those criticisms bring us down and shake us and just leaving us feel despair and discouraged. Lord, we pray, Lord Father God, give us discerning spirit so that we know exactly what that criticism is all about. And with your help, O oh Lord, that we can bring those criticism to you as we look up and remember and call to mind of thinking of you, the great and awesome God in our midst, so that we can continue and keep on moving forward for the future that you desire for us. Lord, Help us, O oh God, that we can overcome the, from those criticism. In fact, that criticism will give us a booster for our service to you so that we can fulfill your will in our midst because that will focus us on you and depend on you. Do that, O oh Lord, as we moving on and serving you in our generation. May your name be exalted and your kingdom will come. Your church will be strengthened and you will be glorified. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all rise. We'll sing our last song. God will make a way where there seemed to be no way. He will make a way. Way. Where there seems to be no way, He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me, He will be my God. Hold me closely to His Son with love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make God a way. God will make a way one more time. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God, hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day, He will make a way. He will make a way. By the roadway. By the roadway. And rivers in the desert I will see. Heaven and earth will fade, but His word will still be made. He will do something.
something new today. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to His Son With love and strength for each new day He will make a way He will make a way With love and strength With love and strength for each new day He will make a way he will make a way. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you. We ask you, Lord, for you to be with us and strengthen us as we're moving forward for your vision, for your heart, that the people of God will respond to you with the same heart as you have given your heart for us. Lord, uh, help us, O oh Lord, in our own lives, that we will be a follower of Christ, that we will do the things that will please you, that there is a true happiness and true joy in that, that at the end of our lives we'll be able to say that if this is it, that you have called us and you have made us to do the things that you want us to do, and this is what it is, and we are thankful to be used by you. Help us, O oh God, in our own lives that will matter and count in your grace. And use us, O oh Lord, that as we make an impact upon your people for your kingdom, for your name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and empowerment of the Holy Spirit be with us and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Only got a one song in the team.